Hi, I'm Tammy Beilstein. Welcome to Tammy's Window on Calaveras. Tonight I have with me uh, one of my favorite people in the world. I know you guys know that I, I like all of my guests. I really do. I like so many people. I love so many people. But if I had a pyramid of people I like, this is the tip top, you know, love, love to like. George is way up here. This is George Stathos, and he uh, works with me over at Hospice of Amador in Calaveras. George is our, a chaplain. He uh, works the, does the bereavement groups. Um, you have your own church now in, in Amador. He is incredible. He's an awesome man. I'm so happy to have him here. Thank you for coming. I'm honored, but I'm humbled oh, by that. Boy, gosh, it wow. is a thrill for me to have you here. Oh, well, I love you. It's so oh, good to be here. I love you, too. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's start at the beginning. So okay. I, I want to know about you and how you got on this path to do the things that you do, because you are such a, um, you're a helper and you're a giver. You're I think you're practically saint-like, but you always tell me that you that you are not perfect and that you've messed up in your life and that you um, that you learn from it. But that's hard to believe. So tell me a little bit about you. <laughs> Tammy, you're just too much. Uh, uh, people are going to find out that I'm not perfect. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess I could go back to when I was uh, as a young man, trying uh -huh. to be popular and uh, going with the crowd. Mm -hmm learning what the crowd did to be cool, and I did those things, and it ended up uh, bringing me to a place of uh, emptiness and uh, dissatisfaction and questioning about life. And mm -hmm. About 21 years old, I had what I would call an experience, a, a spiritual experience, where I came to a place that I thought I needed more, and I was raised in a Greek Orthodox church. I, mm -hmm. I knew about the fear of God, but I never knew about the love of God, and I came in contact with the love of God that began to change my life. So. That's how it kind of started. Did then, you, uh, um, I, I'm just curious, so what did that feel like? How did you know when, when the switch happened from the old George to this new George? Did you feel it? I did, and not everybody does, okay. but it was a radical change. I mean, I knew instantly that something happened. There was a change wow. in my life. My perspective changed, my attitude changed, my lifestyle changed, I mean, overnight, really overnight. Wow. Yeah, but. Most people don't have that experience, but that's okay. how bad I needed God, <laughs> you know, so he was merciful to me, you uh. know. Yeah, so that's how it started. Uh, then I started working for the railroad. I was a railroad engineer. Really? Yeah, enjoyed that thoroughly, a little Sacramento Northern Railroad uh, in Sacramento. And uh, we, obviously we had some, uh, some rails that would take us out of town occasionally, but yeah. most of the time just switching in, in Sacramento. Huh. Uh, married. I have a wife with two children mm -hmm. and uh, eight grandchildren. Wow. Yeah, so I, I'm pretty blessed in that area. Yeah. And then uh, I, I, was, uh, I was sick one day, way, way back. I was living in Yuba City, Marysville. I was working for the railroad there. We had a yard there. And my wife came up to the bedroom and just said, there's a letter that's going to radically change your life. And I said, yeah, right. You know, I'm <laughs> sick. What is it? And she said, there's some people in Canada who need a pastor. Now, I didn't have any formal education. You know, wasn't trained. Yeah. But I had a willingness to go help people. And that's where this willingness began back then. So how, how did these people find George Stathos? Well, I knew a, a, a man. In fact, I lived with him. And he ended up moving up to Bonners Ferry, Idaho. And right across the border was a little town called Yak. <laughs> and he would occasionally go there. And he met some people who would cross the border to spend time with him and his church. And... They began to share their plight, uh, they're hippies, you know, and yeah. they're trying to find God and they need someone to help them. And, you know, I, I wasn't the big adventurous kind of guy, but I thought, boy, this might be a great opportunity. So yeah. long story short, I went there for six years, started in a little town called Yak and moved to a town called Creston, pastored six years and returned back home here. And then one of my best friends was starting a church in Amador County. Uh, the church was probably about six months to a year old, and then sadly, uh, he had a terrible head-on accident that took his life. Oh, no. So they were looking for a pastor. Yeah. And at that time, coming back from Canada, I thought, you know, I'm done with pastoring. That's just not who I am any longer. Hmm. But I felt compelled to help them. Uh, I just said, you know, I'll step in for a season, you know, be an interim pastor and help while you find, you know, the pastor that you really need. Huh. Well, that lasted 25 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, it's a great experience be. for me. I love the people, love the church, you yeah. know, and, uh, and then I just stepped out of ministry, turned it over to my boy. I had some health issues and so forth, and I turned the ministry over to my boy and kind of just got lost for a season, you know, trying to find myself again at, yeah. uh, at 60 years old and wonder what do I do without any retirement and, oh. and no money coming in. Pastors don't get, they don't get set up with their church well, for that? Well, uh, not all, you know, oh. and the church did help some, but okay. uh, no retirement. Mm. So long story short, um, I, I came back into, uh, into the Hamador County area and I heard that hospice was looking for a chaplain. And I thought, wow, I like people and yeah. I like to be with people who grieve. Not that so much that I, you know, the thought is that I like being with people who grieve, but just I'd like to be with them to comfort yeah. them and yeah. help them and so forth, you know. So I thought it would be a great fit. And I was fortunate. Uh, they, uh, beyond. You were fortunate. We oh, are well. so fortunate. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I can't even imagine our place without you. I, well, I'm humbled you, by that oh. again. No, I really. Yeah. But I, I was just amazed that they did hire me. So yeah. thank you for sharing that. And it, it turned my life upside down. It really did. Yeah. Had you had uh, being a pastor? Do you get much experience around death and dying? Oh, often. Yeah. I mean, okay. yeah. I've been with a lot of dying people, and then I was a, a chaplain for the Amador County Sheriff's Department. Oh, okay. So I did death notifications, and that was really difficult. Oh, gosh, when you would knock on the door and give the worst message that they'd ever heard in their life, you know. And then oh. the, the officers would, would uh, join me, and they would uh, leave, and then I'm left there with the grieving husband or wife or mother or father, wow. and just trying to help them work through that terrible, terrible situation. So, yeah, I had some experience. Was, oh, I'd say that's um, yeah, I had a some. time. Yeah. What a hard job. People are always saying to, to me, how do, how do we at hospice do what we do? Being a chaplain for a sheriff's department, that's a completely different level. That would be so hard. Yeah, you know, I don't know how well I did it. I would like to think I did a fairly good job, but I think you always look back and wish that you maybe could have been more of a greater help, a support, you know, whatever it is. But one of the things that hospice has really taught me, and I love hospice, and, you know, I love working with you and the staff there. I mean, just support. Professional, professional people who just mm -hmm. love people. Not only are they gifted professionally, you know, but they have such huge, huge hearts. Yeah. One of the things as a pastor, oftentimes you feel compelled to fix everyone. You just assume that you're the man of the hour, yeah. you know, <laughs> and you've got to just step up and fix people. Yeah. And you are I, the go-to guy. I well, mean, you are, yeah. 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 You are at times, but but at times. I don't know how to fix people. Mm -hmm. So I think hospice helped me to realize the very fact that, you know, you're there not to fix people, yeah. but to walk with them through that difficult life experience right. that they're going through. And that really helped me. It really did. And so this gift of presence, mm -hmm. this gift of attentive listening, mm -hmm. you know, just being there and listening to them, let them tell their sh story. It's so significant to me, yeah. you know, and it's really, really helped me. And you've got me involved in Grief Busters, too. And oh, gosh, you're so great at that. Well, yeah. thank you for that. So yeah. it just, it's just wonderful to be able to come alongside people in the worst day of their life, yeah. or the worst season of their life, and to know that it is so sacred for them. For some of them, they only have a short time left, mm -hmm. and they some invite you in. Yeah. They invite you in. And... Uh, and to me, that's such an honor that they will allow you to do that. Yeah. Of, of anybody and everybody they can have there, yeah. they that allow a chaplain. Such an intimate. There's nothing more intimate than that. You, you, you know that you're at the end and you just want the closest people with you, the people you are the most comfortable with and that you totally trust. And yes, to be invited to, to participate in that is just it's amazing. Well, you know that. It's a, such a great honor. You know, it just is. a great honor and a privilege. And it's... Uh, it's a learning experience too, yeah. because they're teaching me how to die and how yeah. to die right. Yeah. You know, so I've been around death many, many years and you know, I'm moving into 66, gonna be 67. I know that what's happened to some of them will happen to me. Mm -hmm. And they allow me, you know, they allow me just to observe them and, uh, and ask questions. And it's really helped me too, to be a better human being and, uh, yeah. and to really think about my own mortality. Yeah. Are you able to um, leave work at work and separate? Uh, I don't know. And as, they, well, as I'm saying that, I'm thinking I don't know if you totally do because you're such a, um, what you're a real person. You're not 
two people. You are you. <laughs> and even yeah. when you're not working, you're still this, this giving, loving person. Well, thank you for th How saying that. How do you that. handle that? Well, you know, I need to, uh, I need to, at times, just to remove that from my thought life, you know, for a season or for mm -hmm. a moment or whatever it is. Some people I can't, you know, sometimes I take it to bed. But most of the time, I, I just have to give myself permission, you know, to yeah. enter back into my own life with my wife and my children. Because if I don't, then, you know, then I rob them of my attention right. and my presence and, right. and so forth. Yeah. You know, as you know, with hospice, some people sadly come on at the very last moment, maybe yeah. a week or two or yeah. sometimes even a day or two. But some of our patients we get to be with for six months. Mm -hmm. you know, or longer. Or even longer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of yeah, a lot of them get off and yeah. come back on again or stay on a little yeah. bit longer. Sometimes uh, being on hospice, it, as you and I know, someone very ill got that six month um, diagnosis and that's so hard to, to listen to and so hard to take. But then once hospice comes in and our nurses are so gifted at helping them w uh, take care of their pain and, and manage all of that to where their body starts to not exactly heal, but it repairs enough to where they, they're feeling better and mm -hmm. they can yeah. go off of hospice and yeah. come back on and yeah. if they need to. And yeah, it's, it's just it's I just awesome. wish that everyone would take advantage of that. I know. You know, really take advantage of that. And particularly for the caregivers in the home, too, the husband or the wife. Yeah. Or the son or daughter or grandparent, yeah. whoever. Because hospice comes in and supports them in so many ways. Mm -hmm. You know, and obviously our vision is, is wholeness. You know, uh, body, soul, and spirit. And that's what I love about hospice is that they see the, the validity of, of the spiritual aspect of mm -hmm. someone's life. You know, and at times we're just there to visit. You know, we're not there to share. You know, we're not there to share our faith. It's not yeah. about us. It's about them, you yeah. know, and their beliefs and uh, what brings comfort in them. But it's just so neat to be able to establish these relationships that go on for at least six months. And mm -hmm. as you said, sometimes longer. I mean, you feel like you're part of the family. Yeah. And then for me, many, many times, many of these families don't have pastors or they don't have a minister. And I'm offered the opportunity to officiate at the service. Right. And, uh, and oftentimes people say, boy, how did you know him so well? And mm -hmm. I knew him in their hardest times. Yeah. I got to hear really what was on their heart. And yeah. as they begin to reflect on life toward the end of, you know, their, their, uh, their sickness and struggles, I learned a lot about them. And so, yeah, so I'm able to be their pastor for a moment or two, even yeah. after the, pa the loved one passes on, which right. is really neat for me. You know. And then because of your bereavement group here in San Andreas, you also have one in, in Jackson. But um, George has a, a bereavement group that meets over at the Senior Center in Calaveras. It's right down the street here, um, not far from the hospital, mm -hmm. the Senior Center. Um, and they meet Wednesday mornings every week, uh, start at 1030. Mm -hmm. And it goes about an hour, hour, hour and, and a half. half. Yeah. Um, and anyone is welcome. It, it's, it's a hospice um, uh, sponsored, mm -hmm. I guess, yeah, yeah. Uh, a meeting that we do. But it, your, your person that you love did not have to be a hospice patient. It could be anybody. If you're grieving the death of somebody you love, you let us know. George Stathos has that group over there. And, yeah. um, love to he have helps, people come. Yeah, he helps lead the group, but the group helps each other also. Yeah, that's that, what's so unique about it. Uh, we need to talk about our loss. You know, mm -hmm. we need to express it. and. You know, oftentimes when someone is grieving, uh, they're convinced that they're not going to survive. Yeah. You know, so much has been taken from them. For many people, it's like losing an arm or a leg or half them, half of themselves. Right. You know, so the anchor in their life is taken, and so, you know, they're just lost. Mm -hmm. uh, the grief is so great, and what we do is just try to help people realize that others are going through the same thing. You're not yeah. alone. Yeah. Again, we can't fix you, but we can travel with you. Yeah. And what's so unique about that group is because people learn from each other because yeah. everybody processes grief differently. You know, grief doesn't make sense. You know, it's not linear. You know, yeah. you just can't figure it out. It's, it's highs and lows and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. But to learn, you know, like even today, we, we discussed the very fact that someone, you know, uh, was sharing about the idea that I immediately, you know, rid my closet of my loved one's clothing 
Well, another one said, I could not do that. I, I just can't, you yeah. know, and we realize that that they share why they can't or why they mm -hmm. can, and it gives insight to others who are grieving too. And yeah. so they're, they're learning significant insights yeah. by this corporate gathering of, of sharing and, and uh, grieving together. It is a group that no one wants to be a part of. Right. You know, and the cost of membership is astronomical. Yeah. But yet people need some people to understand what mm -hmm. they're thinking and feeling because most of the time people expect these grievers to get over it. You know, it's been a week, it's been right, a month, or right. whatever it is. And it's really neat to be around other people who say, you know what, I've experienced the same thing. People ask me how I'm doing. How do you think I'm doing? I just lost my husband of yeah. 55 years. I just lost my child. Yeah. And uh, it is wonderful for them to experience a group that's filled with love and acceptance, mm -hmm. you know, and comfort where they can just share their pain and know that these people understand it. Yes. We because need to be understood. It's one of those things you cannot understand um, until you've been through it yourself. Um, uh, and what else I like about the group is you have people there at different levels, right. different times of their grief. It's not as if a group starts together mm -hmm. and you know finishes together. People come and go as they need. Um, I don't know, a, a, another shoulder to lean on, or Absolutely. they need reassurance, or or they just need to share again. And I'm yeah. sure that the holidays coming. It's going rough to be times. rough, rough yeah. extremely rough. And in our county, we just had um, our, our sheriff Gary Coons died, and um, uh, I don't know. We, even if you weren't, as, you know, a best friend of his, is everyone knew who he sure. was, and the kind of guy you just think would always be here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. he's he's such a big personality and yeah. he's such a big presence, and and I think that um, probably what happens is when someone has lost someone in their own family, and then someone like Gary dies or someone else that you kind of have some sort of connection to, it brings it all back again. Maybe you need to go back to the group yeah. and talk with someone. Um, yeah, I, good point. Yeah. And, and at times people feel like, you know, they've graduated. Yeah. They feel like we're done with the group. You know, uh, it's been six months, I think I'm okay. Yeah. But many of them return after maybe nine months or 10 months yeah. or maybe a year because we talk about landmines in their life. There could be a birthday that comes up, but there could be a song that they hear on the radio, and yeah. all of a sudden, they thought they're beyond the grief, but realizing, no, it's still continuing, you know? Yeah. And so they come back again for a few weeks just to share again what they're going through. Right. So, right. yeah, this grief is crazy stuff, and uh, we shouldn't have to carry it by ourselves. Yeah. You know, we need, we need a community of grievers to work through that. And there's a passage in the Bible that says, grieve with those that grieve or weep with those that weep in the Bible. It's a great passage. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that's the heart of God, that he doesn't want us to grieve alone. Right. And he doesn't want us to think that our, our grief, you know, is, is something that no one would understand, even though it is personal, even though it's unique. But there are others who understand the pain. Yeah. And, uh, and as you alluded to, with people coming in fresh, you know, maybe a week after a death mm -hmm. or two weeks, and then some people being there a little bit longer, I'm often able to ask those who've been here a little bit longer, you know, to share their journey. Yeah. And as people are fresh with that, they realized, wow, you know, they felt like I did at this moment, but right. now look at them. They made some, some progress in the grief, you know, process. Mm -hmm. So it really helps, it really helps. And, you know, their, their loved ones are still with them. They're just mm -hmm. not in the physical form, but yeah. they still have a relationship with them. And we like the people to share their story about their loved one. We ask them to tell us, yeah. Who are you here for? Yeah. Your husband or wife, what's their name or their children or whatever it mm -hmm. might be and tell us about them. And, you know, we just want to hear the story over and over again. And, yeah. and it's been said, tell the story till you can say it without crying. Yeah. So, yeah, it's such wow. an honor, such an honor. And they're wonderful, wonderful people. And, you know, my heart goes out to them. I know God's heart goes out to them, too. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I'm so thankful for hospice that we provide that for people in the community. We do. And, and I love the way um, uh, Dan and, and, well, hospice has set this up to, to where you being um, a chaplain, like we were saying, you're able to be in the home and get to know some of these families for the hospice families, get to know the patient, and then you can still carry that on and help that. these families um, as long as they need it, yeah. past the, the death of their yeah. loved one. Yeah. But to also be there, like we were also saying, for people who have not had a hospice mm -hmm. patient, had some sort of sudden or unexpected death, or, or just hadn't called hospice. Um, that happens quite often. That happens yeah. way yeah. too often. Yeah. I, Boy, if, if there was some message I could get out to let everybody 
and the whole world now, if you, if, if um, you're having some sort of illness, um, please check in to see if you're eligible yeah. for hospice yeah. because the sooner the better. Mm -hmm. There's so much hospice can do. Um, but, uh, you know, this is National Hospice Month. Mm, November is. And the theme this year for hospice is hospice helps everyone. Mm -hmm. And it is so true. It's so true. It's not just about uh, a patient. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, we take care of everyone in the family. And, um, but you sure you do that so well. I admire the heck out of you. Well, I really do. I'm, again, I'm, I'm honored that you would think that. And I, I love you too and admire <laughs> you so much too for what uh -huh. you do too. And, you know, with grief busters and helping children in their grief. And, you know, we're, we're none of us are going to get out of life without losing someone. Yeah. You know, and the greater significant of that relationship, the greater the pain is, you know, but, but we always lose. And there are people who talk about losing their dogs who even come. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, they just don't know how to handle it. I mean, we, we're just open to everyone to come yeah. and just to talk about the grief process and how we can help them. Yeah. And as you alluded to, you know, some of our patients, you know, or some of our people who come to our grief group of the lost a loved one through an accident and they're there, they're, they've never been a part of hospice, yeah. you know. And they come and join the group and what's so unique about it is, is that, that often they just say, this is the only place where I can be honest. Yeah. I cannot tell my children what I'm feeling, or I can't tell yeah. my husband or my yeah. wife. They just don't understand. You understand, and right. they feel safe there. It's grief such is, a safe place. It's just ugly. It really. is so ugly. It's ugly, and it's yeah. it could be scary, and uh, out of control. Yeah. Feeling like you have no yeah. control. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I, it's um, it's just really neat that that you do this, and that hospice uh, provides this for people. I love that. I know we told where the grief roots meets. I don't. I don't think you get the phone number. If people want to find out about the group, um, call hospice. Ask for George Stathos or any of the the chaplains or, or bereavement people there. Um, in fact, the whole office would know how to <laughs> tell you about the bereavement groups. But the number there um, in uh, in hospice two two three five five zero zero. It's a Jackson number, but like I said, we have uh, the groups in Jackson and Calaveras. We cover both counties. And so with Christmas coming, yeah. um, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year, that has got to be incredibly difficult for, yeah, for yeah. people. You know, and for some, it's their first Christmas or Thanksgiving without their loved one. Yeah. And they need to talk about it, yeah. you know. And, uh, and for some, you know, it's, it's always going to be a difficult, you know, time of the year. You know, you don't go gr through grief and be the same when you come out of it. You're mm -hmm. a different person. You know, you really are. And uh, as they say, it's a new normal. But to be able to allow people to say, this is what we're doing. This is what we've done, yeah. you know, and, and how we can turn, you know, these holidays into maybe something that we can bear, bear, yeah. bear with them, you know. Uh, but again, what we always tell people, you have the right to have a bad day. You have a right yeah. to stay in bed. You have a right to pull the covers over your head, but we also too want you to to move on in your grief when you can too, and, and be successful through that mm -hmm. the best you can. And I think that one of the things that we like to say is just the very fact that you know grief is ugly, but but what's worse than that is if we don't face our grief, you know, yeah. and we don't seem to seek that we want to move on. Right, because you so, get stuck. You, it's easy to get stuck yeah. there, you know, really easy. And so we help people get out of that. And they hear stories about that. And occasionally, you know, I'll bring in someone who's gone through a really severe loss, mm -hmm. you know, a loss of a three-year-old child. Uh, because there's people in our group who've lost children. Right. And they're able to share how they work through that and where they're at today, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, some of the rituals that they do now and how they celebrate the memory of their loved one during yeah. Thanksgiving and Christmas. So they turn it around and try to make it more of a celebration of the life that they've lost yeah. instead of, you know, maybe just feeling that they can't even celebrate at all. I love when people, um, I love traditions and, and ceremonies. I love that. And um, I don't know if you noticed, I think it was on Facebook I saw this. It was a, I think it was Chick-fil-A or some sort of, uh, you know, fast food little restaurant. And it was um, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, those those mm -hmm. uh, occasions, they will set up a empty table with all the place setting there and an empty chair. And um, it has some red, white, and blue there. And it's sort of facing the wall. And it doesn't 
have to say anything else you know when you walk in what that's representing and the people that are not here anymore that empty chair um, but people can do that in their own homes yeah. too they they may not have to make the whole play setting and, and do something like that but just having the person's picture out um, where everyone can see it with maybe a little candle or I think that's wonderful yeah. yeah we we need to keep their memory alive yeah you know their memory's always with us. They're in our hearts. They might not again, as we talked about, or be here physically, but, but they're still with us. And, and we need to honor that life. We need to celebrate that life. And rituals, at times, does that for us. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. I'm wondering if um, once in a while I, I get to be there when George is doing Oh, his, I love it when you are. Grief. I do, too. Yeah. I do, too. I don't know how you feel with this. Maybe once, when uh, meeting before, before Christmas, we can do some sort of project or something maybe make an to. ornament a memorial ornament or or who knows what yeah. but we um i brought this little candle our grief buster group what we do is um especially with the older kids uh the grief buster volunteer will meet with the the child or teen um to talk about their loss and during their meetings they'll have these candles out and these are cool you probably can't see it in here with the the little wick inside mm -hmm. it changes color oh, it's green. which yeah, yeah. is neat for kids it makes it a little bit different and then at the end when they have sort of graduated from grief busters they get to keep this um but it just is a um souvenir is not the right word a uh it's remembrance a, yeah it's a tangible remembrance of their loved one yeah. which is so important it is you know uh, writing letters uh, candles uh, building yeah. a little monument uh, flowers balloons being released you know, occasionally on their anniversary. Right. I've had, you know, people uh, on their anniversary uh, without their loved one there take a picture of their loved one and, mm -hmm. yeah, and sit sit with them even though they're not there, but but the picture is there just to remember them there, as a sense yeah. of remembrance of how great it really was to be married. so nice. And yeah. there's not one idea that will work for everybody because people are so different. That's what's so great about uh, Yeah, yeah give sharing something ideas. a try. Yeah, sharing share ideas, ideas. Yeah. give it a try. Yeah. If that's not the right one, do something else. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think about these people, at the, I think about them all the time. You but do. with the holidays coming. You do. <laughs> I do. You have a huge heart. Too. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You do too. Yeah. That's and a great smile, by do. the way. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. But, um, um, gosh, what was I was going to say, I, uh, I, I love these sorts of things. It reminds me to bring up this okay I almost forgot all right we uh, hospice is doing the annual tree of lights oh I need to make this quick we only have a minute left in Calaveras County we're doing it Saturday December 5th at 5 p.m. at the Calaveras thrift store there are these forms here you can fill one out and for a ten dollar donation you get your loved one's name on a board and a light on the tree a light on the tree love yeah. it you know what? I wish we could talk longer. Um, <laughs> we're out of time. I'm so glad that you came. Um, people look for these flyers here. These give the name, the dates, and times, places for the um, the bereavement groups. Yeah. George is at both of them. George Stathos. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time on Tammy's Window on Calaveras.